Greetings to all of humanity, especially my brothers and my sisters at the Total Exodus Assembly in Trinidad and Tobago and in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and to the rest of the followers of William Branham all around the world. And when I say followers of William Branham, I'm speaking about the message of William Branham. I really want to reach out to you this day and explain to you how the bride of Christ, of which William Branham spoke about, should live and how you should interpret the Bible to live that way. Now, if you will only give me a listening air, before you start judging, condemning, or disagreeing in any way, let me point out to you that I'm not asking anyone to believe anything that I am saying because what I'm saying is not theory. It is practical. So the only how a person can know what I'm speaking of, whether it is so or not, is if they are willing to put what I'm saying to work in their life. And with me being a life coach, I've been coaching people all around the world and they've been getting great results and rewarding me handsomely. I know exactly that I can teach you how to be healthy, wealthy, and wise, and how to understand what William Branham was speaking about concerning all the things that he said that the bride would do. So it's a doing. It's not just a speaking. Now, the first thing you have to come to realize is that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically. That the Bible is not literal, neither is the Bible secular history. For the Bible is written symbolically and it has no reference to anyone that existed thousands of years ago or to any actual event that took place upon earth so thousands of years ago. From Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, it's all a great psychological drama. Also, I want to point out to you that William Branham's message had two parts. It had the exoteric, which was fed to the masses or to the public. And it had the esoteric, which is the inner, deeper meaning metaphysical meaning to it. So my brother and my sisters, those who have kept you in slavery wanted to continue to keep you in a perpetual state of mental slavery by making you believe that when the Bible speaks of Christ it is speaking of a man that existed 2,000 years ago. But before you shut me off, just listen. Just listen. Just give me a listening ear for a while. Now, let me quote a scripture for you and break it down and show you something. Now, St. John 1 and 3 says that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, in that same St. John 1 and 3, verses 1 says also, In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Then it goes on to say that all things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Now, my brother and my sisters, that Him is not a man 2,000 years ago. That Him is a personification of your own human imagination which is the creator in man now hold a while you might disagree with me now it is your right to disagree with me and if you disagree with me could you tell me of one thing that was made that wasn't first imagined or wasn't first a thought or that wasn't first an idea or can you tell me of one thing that ever going to be made that must not first be a thought or first be an idea? 
Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, when you have a thought or an idea, it is first invisible. You can't touch a thought. You can't taste a thought. You can't handle a thought. You can't contact the thought by five senses. That's what it means in the Bible when it tells you, and the world became flesh and we handle him. It is teaching you when you learn how to use your mind to create your desire that you would handle the thing with the five senses. <laughs> you know, many people brag and boast about William Branham created. But they fail to realize that the creator is in each and every one of us. Because God is your own human imagination which is the creator in every man. Therefore, in this game of life, you can choose to play the game or you can choose to be played. Now you can use your creative faculty to create anything. But first, let me point out something to you. All your mental faculties that you were born with from a very young age, as a matter of fact, by the time you leave your mother's womb and come into this dimension, to the age of seven, your subconscious mind is wide open and it could be downloaded with whatever information that is given to you by your parents, your teachers, your pastors, or whoever, your government, you name it. Now, those who would have hidden such truth from you, they understand the esoteric side of the Bible where it says that you must train up a child in the way that it shall go, that in the future they will not depart. My brother and my sisters, whatever you were taught between the time from your mother's womb, to up to the age of seven can follow you all of your other uh, life if you are not open-minded and if you're not willing to question certain things that's how it would be therefore my brother and my sisters those who knows that the very camera that I'm looking through it was first imagined it was first a thought the airplane it was first imagined, it was first a thought, the money. It was first an idea, it was first a thought. They know if you tap in to your Christ self, your higher self, which is the highest level of consciousness, that you would be awakened, you would be enlightened, and you would have an awakened imagination. That's the reason why my brother and my sisters, there are people who have asked me to use my imagination on their behalf and they are reaping the benefit and the reason why they are reaping the benefit is because they didn't doubt how can we walk the works of God the Christians have been asked they say believe in him whom God has sent God can send no one but himself because the sent and the sender are one. And I can tell you that when the Bible says that you shall change from mortal to immortality in a twinkling of an eye, that twinkling of an eye is the opening of an eye within you. Because this life is a dream, and when you awake out of the dream, it is the same night you're going to experience your birth from above, which is the birth from the skull, and you will become invisible and be sent to teach of the invisible. That's why, my brother and my sisters, for another time again, I'm encouraging you. You can always email me and told Exodus Assembly Review at gmail.com. Or you can email me at Black Mad Guru, as in B L C K M A D G U R U at gmail.com. If what I'm saying, if it makes sense to you, and you would like to prove what I, what I am saying, that I can teach you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise, and you would like for me to give you practical exercise to do for your own self, and prove you can become whatever you want to become in this world, you come to realize 
that Brother Vin didn't have to sell himself and his reputation for 28 million. He could have get far much more than that. And I can teach you how you can create far much more than that. Because you're told in Malachi 3 and 10 that I would open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you would not have room to store. That have happened to me. I wrote a book called How to Open the Flood Gates of Abundance and explain Malachi for you. And now I'm experiencing that in my life. And I'm so sure that I can teach anyone. Now, but for me to do that, I have to reprogram your subconscious mind because you are programmed a certain way. As I would have mentioned before from since you were a child. Because you see, you born in amnesia, which is a state of forgetfulness, and you forget who you are. And your search in life is to know who you are. Because you do not know who you are. You forget that you are the creator. You forget that you are actually God in flesh. But it can never be known intellectually. It must be experienced. And remember, the divine law of reproduction is that every seed and every species reproduce after its own kind. If one hasn't been awakened, then he can't teach you how to be awakened. If one has not been enlightened, then he can't teach you how to be enlightened. If one has never experienced the invisible, then they can't teach you of the invisible. Now, my brother, my sisters, faith is the substance that things hope for, the evidence of things not seen. The camera I am looking at, it is because of faith. The inventor had the idea. He couldn't see it. And what he did? Action. And with that action, he used emotion. Because emotion is energy in motion. And then he see the manifestation. Then he came into his Sabbath, his place of rest, because his creation was finished. Even with a man and a woman, when a man go, go with a woman and he reach that place, he no longer have that desire. Even that act, I can teach you all the secrets that was hidden from you. So my brother, my sisters, I can go on and on and on, but I'm giving you a chance to prove for yourself how the bride of Christ should actually live. And to show you that when William Brown speak about the bride and the bridegroom, he was speaking about the conscious and the subconscious mind. And when you understand how the conscious and the subconscious mind work, which is the inner man and the outer man, when you understand energy, vibration, and frequency, when you understand the elements, earth, wind, water, fire, and you being spirit, and how to manipulate all wind, water, and fire and become the creator, you come to realize that you're the Lord and master of your own destiny and that you can create your reality consciously. Then you will come to realize the Jesus and Mary story is idolatry. To keep you in mediocrity, to keep you in mental slavery, to keep you in limitation when you are a limitless being. For you are a spirit having a human experience. My brothers, I can go on and on and on and on with this nutritious food that I want to feed you with because I've gone beyond the camp of farms and rituals. I've gone beyond the camp of denomination and religion and come into a place of self-realization. I have transcended. So, when William Branham spoke of a prophet, a, a mystic, is one who's seen in another dimension. And he said it's like a man climb on the, on the shoulder of another man and he's looking over in a stadium. And he's telling the other man what is going on in the stadium. But the one down there, do not know, you just have to take what he's saying because he's the one who's looking into that dimension. That's what I'm talking about. So, there's a way you're supposed to live as the bride of Christ and everyone upon the face of this earth have that right to live that way 
Because abundance and prosperity is your abundance. If you don't believe me, just look around you. Look at the trees. Look at the abundance. Look at the sea. Look at the fishes. Look at the abundance. All around you is abundance. That is why I give practical tests. According to 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 where it says, Examine yourself, man. Test yourself. Don't you know your own self? Don't you know your own self that Jesus Christ is in you? If Jesus Christ is in you, tell me what form. I am telling you, it is your own human imagination, which is the creator in man. That's the reason why the church system gives you an idol to worship, for you to believe in a power outside of yourself, for you to believe in a God outside of yourself. But the kingdom of God is within you, Luke 17, 21. And it says in Matthew 6, 33, that whenever you discover the kingdom, you discover the secret of creation. Thus you will say all these things will be added unto you. So challenge me. How are you going to challenge me? To teach you and show you what to do. If it don't work, well then, you can say anything. But you have to know that you have to come with an open mind. And when you come with an open mind, and you be honest with yourself, and you say, for years I've been paying tithes, I've been paying offering, all of these things, and nothing has been happening in my life. And I'm willing to put what this man is, is, is willing to teach me to work. Then you'll be able to get the result. I've seen the pastor of the Torix Assembly in my country right here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines use that law unconsciously. Had, it, had he known how to use it consciously and understand even a higher level because what I'm speaking about here is the law and everyone has used the law. You can either use it unconsciously or consciously. But I've come into the promise which is a whole other dimension or a whole other world of experience I'm talking about. He used it unconsciously to manifest certain things and even covet another man's vehicle and driving it today and he would say that the riches are the wealth of the wicked store up for the just but when you understand this thing you do not have to take anything from no one you can get the same thing and you can get more that is why my brother and my sisters here am I out in nature bringing this message to you encouraging you that if you believe in the characters of the Bible and you believe that they were literal, let me give you the benefit of the doubt. If you even believe that they were literal, right? All of them was living sumptuously. You believe in Abraham, you believe in Isaac, you believe in Jacob, you believe they were literal men two thousand, uh, thousands of years ago. They didn't live hand to mouth. And I am not living hand to mouth either. I am sleeping. And I'm manifesting money. I'm in the toilet. I'm manifesting money. I'm out here speaking to you. I'm manifesting money. And the Bible tells you money answers all things. And when you understand cosmic money, then you understand the physical money. The physical one that you can hold like this. And to see a man who had built up a repetition and many people all around the world would have believed so much in this man. And because for seven years, I've, 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 I've been in the Torah Exodus Assembly. And every convention from 2001, I think, right up to 2007, I've been to all of them. I've been among all of the brethren. I've eaten, I've drunk with them. I know everything that goes on. I know that there are denominations. And I have to come now and I'm have, I have to help you. I'm not here to pull down or bring down anyone. I'm not here to condemn anyone. But message believers condemn all denomination when they themselves as a denomination. And you can live in a glass house and want to throw stone. And then using conflict of interest when you've been caught. Hiring lawyer. Then you're saying you're the apostolic church. 
of the book of Acts. They never hire a lawyer. Prison doors open off their own. But that is another subject for another time because if I go in to show you how that all work, you'd marvel. Because an angel is a messenger. And what brings message to you and from you, it's your thoughts. And a disciple is a follower. And what follow you wherever you go, it is your thoughts. That is why the 12 disciples represent the 12 powers of man. 12 qualities that you must possess. You have to know which one the disciple represents faith. It's a quality in you. You have to know which one represents love. It's a quality in you. You have to know which one represents thanksgiving. It's a quality in you. You have to know all of these things. So, my brother and my sisters, I think it's time for me to come to a close here by encouraging you that if what I'm saying to you, if it is resonating with you in any way, then it is for you. If you're saying to yourself, what this man is saying, it makes a lot of sense to me. Follow your heart. It is for you because it's only when the student is ready that the teacher would appear. And before when I said that vain ministry is over, it's finished, it's going to fall. I've already said that when vain ministry fall, my work is going to rise. And it's been happening. It's happening like magic. Therefore, my brother and my sisters, I just want to remind you that this message I bring to you, it is a single eye message of self-realization of which Matthew 6.22 tells you that if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. And don't let anyone fool you and tell you that that single eye and the US dollar represent the all seeing eye of any Lucifer. It is the all seeing eye of the God within you, which is your own human imagination. Teaching you that you have to see things through the eye of imagination. For everything was first imagined, it was first at all. So, with that being said, now I must give you the symbol of the single eye. For had it been that I would have awakened within myself like a fire being and would have heard the unearthly wind and ascend and exit my skull and became invisible, I would have been here bringing the message of the invisible to you, pointing you to look inwardly and to come into true, your true identity, to know that it is your divinity. That's the reason why I always give you the symbol of the single eye. Saying to you that when you have the experience, you come to realize that it is the rising of the S-U-N in a S-O-N. And that is the dawning of a new day in your life. And you come to realize why Psalms 84, 11 says, The Lord thy God is a S-U-N and a shield, and no good thing will he withhold from you. Because when you discover the secret of imagining, or the se yes, when you discover the secret of imagining, you will di discover no good thing with the, it with the heat with hold from you. And in Malachi 1 2, it says that the S-U-N as in the Son of Righteousness shall arise in you with healing in his wings. You will be healed in every way, including financially, psychologically, every way. So my brother and my sisters, with that being said, and with me teaching you that the sun parallels the human imagination, the human imagination parallels the sun. For without the sun, there is no life and there is no light. And without the human imagination, there is anything made that was made. My encouragement to you is to use your mind power, which is your solar power, your creative power, your sun power, your God power, to achieve your every desire. So with that being said, I want to say peace, love you all, I'm out.